Thank you. You have certainly studied this piece extremely well, and all your attention, intentions were right, and you used the whole scope of the dynamics for going from pianissimo to fortissimo and so on, so there is a lot to praise in what you have done. And nevertheless, I got very little satisfaction out of it. We are going to try to understand why. <coughs> All right? Okay. Now, I believe, here I start something which is completely outside of the piece in itself. I believe that our voice is a, a vibration which have been somehow originated somewhere inside me, I don't want to know where, seems to rise, <laughs> seems to rise easily, like, like could I say, like a steam out of boiling water. Uh, I don't know, like, a, like a, a flower coming out of a, ste of, of a stem. And uh, that it then comes to the mouth and there starts flourishing. By the way, there is a very uh, adequate, I believe, a distinction to be made, and this is to be found in uh, the first pages of the only book we have about Caruso's real way of singing, a book written by his teacher, Dr. Marafiotti, who was not only his, his doctor, but also his partner at poker and so on. Uh, and the first chapter says, starts with those words. Do you know the book by chance? No. The, the, it says, the sound of our voice is made in the larynx, but the voice itself exists when we say words in the mouth. The sound starts somewhere else, but the voice is what is ringing in the words in the mouth. Consequently, the mouth plays an enormous role in singing. I do not know whether in any of us has said or ideas that the voice is here or here or there or here. I have no idea. But the voice is something which happens in the mouth and which is inside the words you say. And consequently, it is necessary to have a great flexibility of the mouth and especially of the lips. And it seems strangely enough that you make very little use of your lips. You refrain from using them. You settle in this position that you have now, smiling at me, and then you sing your song through that, but for the very high notes. We are going to try to see whether it can be done otherwise. <coughs> hmm? Would it disturb you? No, no, no. Okay, fine. Now, tell me, uh, uh, when Herod sings that song? In, in the, the stories of Solomon and, and John the Baptist, in this... Salome. Salome. And, um, um, let's see. As far as the, the opera is kind of a prettier thing of the, that story, but it would be after, I'm but not sure exactly. Just I, what has happened right before, in the preceding two minutes. I'm not sure. Well, he is mourning the absence of Salome, uh, his, she's uh, his uh, stepdaughter, and very young, maybe 13 or 14, and there are several versions of this, as you know, and uh, uh, she has left the palace and has disappeared. Actually, she has gone to the desert in, in quest of the man who has struck her so strongly, uh, John the Baptist. So Herod is mourning her and longing for her. He is in his palace. You can picture him in an immense sofa with 200 yeah. pillows and uh, uh, cassolettes, uh, 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 perfumes uh, in the air, fuming on the side, you see, smoking in the side. Okay. Uh, <coughs> And a kind of sorceress brought to him has promised him that if he would drink a, a potion she's going to prepare for him, then he's going not only to see Salome in his dream, but to possess her. So it's at the very moment, the very minute before this, she has said that and has given him the potion. And he's there with, with his golden cup or golden glass of some kind, and with the potion there, and he wonders, is it possible that what that woman has said could happen? And then he picks for himself already the, not only the vision, but practically the possession of the girl. Hmm? So it's an extremely yeah. sensuous yeah. Yeah. piece of music. All right? Now, when you said at the beginning, very rightly, all your intentions were right, very reflectively, 
Ce breuvage pourrait me donner un tel rêve. But you have said, Ce breuvage pourrait me donner un tel rêve. Why did that allow your voice to ring, all, the, the, the voice to ring all over your mouth? Why did you, did you keep... Mm -hmm. You were right singing piano, absolutely yeah. right. But even a piano must have a, a, a vibration. Mm -hmm. Piano cannot be dull to the point that there is nothing which rings anymore. That's a sign. And look, look at me. Ce breuvage. Ce breuvage. Now, you are, you are at the dentist. Say, ah, ah, sing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's start. Ce breuvage pourrait me donner un tel rêve. Je pourrais la revoir. No, 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 the voice is some secret. It is, it is a... I said before, it's like a steam. It's something which escapes. Why do you put a lid on it? Je pourrais la revoir. It's very natural. There is nothing to do. Let it be. Je pourrais la revoir. Je pourrais la revoir. But not here. La revoir, la revoir. La revoir. The voice is in the mouth. Okay, use your voice. Okay, from the start. You can do it very well. Ce breuvage pourrait me donner un tel rêve. Je pourrais la revoir, contempler sa beauté. I disturb you because you don't do it as usual, then you cannot control it. Huh? Okay? Yeah. <coughs> now, I dare say that with all your extremely good intentions, you do not deliver the music. Now you have delivered the 40, but not everything else. Yeah. I felt better after I got it. Started. Yes. Now, uh, <coughs> you take a violin, for instance. Well, if you have only the strings of the violin, suppose that you have that they, the, they are tied here and they are tied there. Eh? And uh, there is no box. You don't have the violin itself. And you try to play those strings and they make... <laughs> <laughs> That's all they do. But if you put the violin in the back of them, then the vibration of those strings invade the whole box and then they sound and make music. You do seem to have at your disposal all the, 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 the natural strings that we have, and you use them in some notes extremely well, but then all the time you try to play without the box. And for us, the box is all the opening inside our mouth, and the, 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 the head and the skull. Maybe it's not generally known, but I have been told with the most extreme seriousness by a, a rather famous surgeon in the East that the most the uh, resounding, resonant part of our body is the brain. And of course, that gets the tenors of the hook. But, uh, <laughs> but, but it's true. Uh, the, the, you must let your voice ascend and invade everything and make space for it in your mouth. And now, how do you conceive a vowel A? Ah. I conceive it like, like a kind of egg in my mouth. Ah! Do you think, uh, At first I thought you were... Yeah. I thought I, at first I thought you were British. <laughs> okay. The ventriloquist here. <laughs> Singing with my <laughs> <Yeah>. vocals still. <laughs>
And can you do this with your mouth? Yes. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Let's try again. <coughs> oh no, let's, let's start with V. V, look. Vision fugitive. The voice is here and resounds <coughs> there, but it is here and resounds. <coughs> It is better. <coughs> when the voice is something you have to labor at, but it is something you constantly control, wondering, is that enough of this and, uh, and uh, not too much of that, and so on, you are unhappy and you don't sing well. There are a few basic things that all of us do naturally, and one of them is the posture, as I tried to uh, show to our friend a while ago. You have a very good posture, you carry yourself extremely well, but suddenly you, you take a very, a very strong breaks and put those breaks, you grab them on the voice. Can't you let all that go? Huh? I know I can. But if you, are you shy? <coughs> oh. Is that, that be the cause? I, I won't be after a nut. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to be shy. Hmm? By the way, it will pass. Yeah. I, was an, I was an extremely shy youngster. And you see what happened. <laughs> 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 hmm? OK, now, I, now, I would like to have the beginning. And then I show you just, I, I don't have all the voice for singing anything. But may I have the beginning? There is a tempestuous entrance. Ce breuvage pourrait me donner un tel rêve. As written, je pourrais la revoir, contempler sa beauté. The first phrase is with six, uh, uh, eighths and sixteenths, and the second phrase is in triplets. If you sing what is written, it will be fine. Je pourrais la revoir, contempler sa beauté. And then follow the line of the, the written music. Don't, don't, don't try to, to correct it. Mm. And again, you lose such a time between your phrase. <coughs> All that is connected. Let's try it again. And open your mouth. French, we roll the R, so oh, yeah. Ce breuvage pourrait double R yeah. me donner un tel rêve. Okay. There is another notion that we Frenchmen don't, don't use the R in singing. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> in speaking, and depending on the province, some, some of them with the R in the back, that happens, but never in singing. In cabaret singing, that's another thing. Mm. I can do that all the time. All the time I sing, all the time, and I raise. It's completely connected with the phrase. It's like the continuation of the phrase. And you seem, yeah, to, to, you from, you seem to reinstall, you, you prepare yourself for the next phrase by re yeah. It should be something very elastic. As I said, the idea of singing is completely an idea of continuous curves. And never of thing that you attack. I don't understand the word <coughs> attack. When somebody tells me that he has his he tells me how to hit a high tone, but I'm not surprised your high tone doesn't, doesn't work well if you hit it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs> 